Hi everyone, welcome to the second tutorial in this series on Wellness Recovery Action Planning developed by Mary Ellen Copeland. Today we are going to talk about the wellness toolbox and tools that go into the wellness toolbox. This forms the second part of the study of mental health recovery conducted by Mary Ellen Copeland in the United States. So what are wellness tools? And why do we care about wellness toolbox or tools and toolbox? So for this, I'm going to show you a quick presentation on what are wellness tools. So wellness tools or toolbox. Um, wellness tools in general are the things you use to keep yourself well and the things you can use to help yourself feel better when you don't feel well. So, and these things are normally put into a thing called a wellness toolbox. But wellness tools can be either abstract or they can either be physical things. Abstract meaning talking to a friend, um, going to church, all these kind of things that you cannot actually fit into a box, but they are abstract things. Um, they are things that happen. Um, but they can also be physical things. And examples would be Bible, a Bible if you're a very religious person, a favorite film, music, uh, a CD of someone you like, um, photos, etc. All these kind of things are, can, are acceptable as wellness tools or, uh, or part of your wellness toolbox. So what I'm going to do now is show you my wellness toolbox and how it affects me, how, it, uh, how I use it to uh, support me in my own recovery. So this is my wellness toolbox. As you can see, there's an awful lot of writing and bits and bobs on it. And you can develop your wellness toolbox in the outside any way you want, but this is the way I wanted to, to develop it. So to start off with, this is the wellness toolbox and it says RAP, Wellness Recovery Action Planning. And that's really important uh, because it states to me that this is my actual wellness toolbox. On here, you have a quote, and it says, storms don't last forever. And that's really important, and I, I find this really important for me, because it helps me realize when I'm really having a bad day, that hold on a second, this will pass, and things will get better. And that's what your wellness toolbox is supposed to be for as well, to kind of remind you that, you know what, there is good things in life, uh, um, and it will help you to realize that, the storm will eventually pass and you will get that you will get back to your your whatever way you want to work um, or your normality if that makes sense uh, I also have the tip um, crest on it and that's because it's to remind me of where I'm from um, when I become unwell or when I start to become unwell I tend to lose uh, my sense of connection I tend to you lose my sense of identity and my meaning and my purpose and this box for me really showcases my identity my connections to my community and to my home and to uh, and to everything else and it also shows my meaning the meaning I have in my life and the purpose I have in my life so it keeps me on track that way so that's the front cover and as you see there's other parts to it as well for instance here this uh, is uh, I don't know if you can see it but it is uh, a little photo of the Chime model developed by Lini et al 2011 and I think it's really important for me because it shows you the areas of my life that uh, I need to focus on um, but it, it, it also helps me as well because I'm pretty much an academic by nature and I like knowing things and learning things. Um, and I find these are really important aspects of recovery. So you see for connectedness. Do I feel connected to my community? Do I can feel connected to home? H is hope. Uh, and as we discussed yesterday, hope we we much to hope for. We hope uh, we 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 look for things to hope for in our community, and we we hope that, that we have a good uh, future ahead of us. I is identity, and it's having that identity. I am Michael. I am an advanced level rap facilitator. I am a brother. I am a son. I am a national engagement and recovery lead, etc., etc., etc. Um, and it just shows you that you are part of something and you have an identity. 
Um, M is for meaning and purpose. And it's, it's having that something that will actually get you up in the morning and keep going. For me, it's studying. For me, it's improving the mental health services, all that kind of stuff. And E is empowerment. And uh, that I am, am empowered to do the things I want to do in life. If we turn to this side here, we see, first of all, is the HSE. And that's because until relatively recently, I was employed um, by the HSE as a peer support worker. And I found that was really important in my life. Um, you know, it, 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 it gave me that sense of identity, but it also gave me that sense of connection. It gave me that sense of meaning and purpose in my life as well. And that was really important. Over on the other side, you have the, the, the number for the Samaritans, 116123. And it's really important, again, because it helps me realize when I turn to this wellness toolbox, it makes me realize straight away that there are people out there who will listen to you and will kind of uh, support you or facilitate a discussion so that you can support yourself in your own recovery journey. This model here comes from CBT. Um, and it's a five stage model and it looks at the situation that causes a thought and the thought causes a number of reactions, whether it's physical, emotional, uh, behavioral, all these kind of different reactions that you may come across. And that's really important because it reminds me that, yeah, I had to go through CBT for my own wellness as well with social anxiety. And, um, it reminded me that, hold on a second, whenever my thoughts come in and they're really negative thoughts, that they're only thoughts, you know? And uh, thoughts can cause a lot of reactions in the body, as you can see from this diagram. Um, but it's to remember that thoughts are just thoughts. Uh, they're not fact, and that's the most important thing. If we turn to this side here, as I mentioned before, I am an academic. Uh, and I like learning new things. And this is a quote uh, from uh, William Anthony, 1993, his definition of recovery. And it's one that really resonates with me. It's about uh, developing a deeply personal and unique process that allows one to carry on, uh, keep going with their life uh, and live a happy and fulfilling life, even with the constraints imposed by mental ill health. And I find that's really important because for me, my mental health challenges are never really going to go away. I'm still going to have the voices. I'm still going to have the shadows on a daily basis um, or a twice daily basis, whatever way they come. But the thing is that I am in charge of my own recovery. Uh, and that's really important. And it kind of goes back to that personal responsibility bit again that we discussed in tutorial one. On this side, again, uh, it kind of shows you the journey I took to get to where I am now. And it kind of made me realize that, yeah, I am connected to people. That's either through the consumer panel, which is now a local forum, um, where you're connected to people uh, with similar interests and you're kind of trying to make positive changes to the services. Uh, connected to my peer support buddies um, around the country uh, and especially in my locality, um, you know, and having that identity that even though I don't practice peer support working anymore, I still have the identity of I am a peer support worker in, in many senses. And then uh, ARI as well, which is now combined with the Office of Mental Health Engagement to become the Office of Mental Health Engagement and Recovery. Uh, but it reminds me that I have connections there uh, and that, you know, I have an identity with them as well. Now as a National Engagement and Recovery Lead, but I also had the identity in the past of being a facilitator for them, for being a speaker, for being an author for them and all that kind of stuff. And that's all really important. So that's the outside of my box. And when we start looking at the inside of the box, uh, there's more stuff that will come into play as well. So outside, in the, in, in the cover of, in the inside cover of my uh, wellness toolbox is a picture of a dog. Now he's a Siberian Husky by the name of Nico. He is literally my pride and joy. Um, he is a chap that gets me up in the morning, uh, kind of makes me realize that I have a responsibility to look after Nico and make sure he's okay. Um, he gives me that sense of meaning and purpose in that sense. Uh, he also gives me that identity because I'm his daddy. Um, and um, it, it gives me that connection to, to someone or something, um, you know, as well. And I find that's really important. 
Um, music is a very important part of, of recovery, in my opinion, uh, and um, I, that's why I have an iPad, iPod rather, in my um, wellness toolbox, uh, because I find music is so important for my recovery. I have to listen to music every day because it brings me, it keeps me going, it allows me to continue on with my day. As I said in tutorial one, there are certain types of music I cannot listen to because it brings me back to a really bad place. But the music I do listen to is very poppy, it's very dancey, it's all that kind of stuff. And it helps me realize that, you know, it, 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 that things are good and things are happy and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I also feel that connection with music. I can feel the beats. I can feel the emotion in the in in the singer's uh, voice. I can feel all of that. And it, it's very hard to explain it, but that's how um, music affects me, and it brings me so much joy in music every day. I cannot play an instrument, but I love listening to music, and that's why music is really important. Going through a few photos. And you can have photos in your uh, wellness toolbox. And it's really, really handy to have photos in the wellness toolbox, especially when you kind of fit the actual thing in. Uh, an example of that for me um, are my degrees. So you'll see them there. There is a degree, uh, another degree, another degree. Um, and the reason why they cannot fit in there is because the obvious reasons they cannot fit in there. But the thing is, I have a picture of them to realize that, to help me realize that, hold on, Michael, you have achieved something. You've achieved three degrees. You know, that's nothing to be sneered at. Um, you should be proud of that. And sometimes when I'm unwell, I'm not really proud of it. I think I should have done better and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but this helps me to realize that, hold on, Michael, you're actually, you've actually done quite well for yourself. Um, so that, and it also gives me that identity as well that I'm actually, you know, I'm a, an Illuminati, if you want to call it that, um, of a college. Um, these are a picture, this is a picture of my peer support buddies and in our graduation in 2017 from Dublin City University. And, um, you know, it, this gives me, this reminds me that I have that sense of connection you know, even though I'm no longer a peer support worker, so to say, um, I'm no longer practicing peer support, rather. Um, I still have that connection to my peer support family, and that's really, really important for me. Once again, I have Nico. Um, this is Nico when he was a little bit younger. Um, he's a bit older now. Um, but it reminds me that I have this little chap to look after. I'm his daddy, and I need to look after him. Um, I give him the best life and the life he deserves as well. You know, um, I then have a picture of myself and you might say, why have you a picture of yourself and why do I look so stupid in that picture? But the thing is, this picture reminds me that, hold on, Michael, you actually have a fun side to you. You might be, you might have a serious side, you know, the academic stuff and all that kind of stuff. But I do also have a, a very fun side and that's really important for my recovery to realize that I actually have that side to me. Um, I recently got into kind of uh, journaling and kind of noting down different things that help me to keep well. And I came across this, it's a happiness planner. And it's really, really interesting because it, it helps you to become more happy in 100 days uh, by writing down your thoughts and writing down things that are good in your life. It's kind of like gratitude journaling in a way, um, but it's really, really useful and I really enjoy doing it and it's something that uh, you know I, I would encourage anyone to do because uh, sometimes our thoughts get bottled up in our head uh, and sometimes it's really good to actually write it down and, and release it that way um, so that's the journey uh, I recently got into traveling uh, since I got better uh, well got to a good, better stage in my recovery I kind of took up traveling I love traveling around the world kind of seeing different places learning new things um, and I suppose when I become unwell, I'm kind of like, I kind of think, well, what have I done with my life? I'm useless, that kind of stuff. But then when I see this, it kind of reminds me, hold on, Michael, you've actually, um, you've actually traveled a fair bit. You've seen the world. You've, you've made the most of the time. You've made the most of this second chance in life uh, that I've got, you know? And that's what's really important for me. When I was unwell, um, I, as I stated earlier, I've lost, I lost my sense of identity. I lost my sense of meaning and purpose and connections and all of these sort of things. 
Um, as I said in tutorial one, I was training to be a general nurse at the time and I had to give up general nursing because of my ongoing mental health difficulties. Uh, but uh, within that, um, I have, I, in my wellness toolbox, I have medical books, uh, a, a sample of medical books. Uh, and the reason why I have them in there is because when I was going through a really rough patch, this gave me helped me to cling on to that sense of identity, that sense of meaning and purpose that I'm actually here to help people, to support people um, in the best way I can. And it helped me kind of hold on to my dream of hopefully one day becoming a doctor. Um, now that has changed a bit from medical doctor to actually trying to get a PhD, but it's still there. And it shows me that, you know what, Michael, you still have that connection. You know, you, you still, even though you're having a really bad patch today, maybe, you still have that connection, you know? And that's what's really important. I love films. Anyone that knows me knows that I take at least two hours every night off uh, where I do absolutely nothing, bar watch television. One of my favorite programs is Apollo 13. It's a film um, about the Apollo uh, disaster or the incident that happened in space. Um, and uh, I really, really enjoy it. Um, I, I love watching it because it's very science based and I'm very, I suppose I'm a very nerdy person in that way. Um, and I really enjoy watching it. Um, and that's what really helps me because it gives me that identity and that connection back to that part of me that's very science and very wanting to know knowledge and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's why that's really important for me. Uh, I also have a clicker. And this is to remind Nico uh, and myself that I am his daddy um, and that I take care of him the best way I can and look after him and give him the best life possible. Um, finally, in my wellness toolbox, uh, and I'm trying to kind of give these up because I'm trying to lose a bit of weight, but um, chocolate, I really like chocolate. Um, you know, it's nice to have a bit of chocolate and to eat it and to just let it soothe in your mouth and all those lovely flavours that come from it. Um, and I find when you're really having a tough day that having a bit of chocolate is really nice as well. But I'm trying to replace that with more healthier um, uh, thing now that I'm trying to lose that bit of weight. And that shows that your wellness toolbox is ever evolving and you're changing your wellness toolbox every single time. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not something that you just fill in once and that's it. Uh, it's something along with the rest of your rack plan that actually changes over, over the time period that you're working with it. Um, and that you're using it. Uh, and really your wellness toolbox is only as good as what you put into it. And you have to put in stuff that actually actually does mean a lot to you and stuff that actually does actually help you to feel good when you're not actually feeling that good, if that makes sense. So that's it for the wellness toolbox. And I hope that gives you some inspiration on how to actually make your own wellness toolbox. Tomorrow's tutorial will be on um, what am I like when I'm well? And that's really important because it gives your supporters, as we said earlier in your key concepts uh, in tutorial one, that, uh, that, that baseline of what you are actually like when you are away. So I hope you'll join me for that. Um, and I'd like to thank you for uh, taking the time to actually sit down and listen to me and learn a little bit more about rap. Um, I suppose between now and tomorrow, if I could ask you to do one thing, is to kind of think of the tools, think of the kind of tools that support you in your wellness and what kind of tools you can actually put in. Remember, your tools can be either abstract or they can actually be physical things that you put into your wellness toolbox. So it could be a tattoo, it could be a memory, it could be, uh, it could be a place. All of these kind of things are important. And remember, if it's an abstract thing, you can always take a photo of it and put it in your wellness toolbox to remind you of that place. So that's what's really important. So between now and then, I would like to thank you um, for listening to me, and I hope you all have a lovely and safe day. Thank you.